Hello, everybody. This is Richard R.J. Escal for the Zero Hour in this week's edition of our reading program. And I'm going to go a little bit further afield this week in our reading and go to the Russian anarchist Peter Kropotkin, whose uh, seminal book, The Conquest of Bread, influenced many, many thinkers to follow including Karl Marx and uh, other people on the spectrum. That includes, interestingly enough, some libertarian thinkers as well because of the anarchist dimension of Peter Kropotkin's thought. But Kropotkin was very much a left anarchist uh, in the um, a school of communist anarchism. But he wrote something that I think is very germane politically today. It was considered radical at the time, but I think it's a thought worth Considering today, you tell me what you think. I will read it, and you you can uh, let me know in the comments section on YouTube or wherever you like what your reaction is. But this is what he wrote. Time was when a peasant family could consider the corn which it grew or the woolen garments woven in the cottage as the products of its own toil. But even then, this way of looking at things was not quite correct. There were the roads and the bridges made in common, the swamps drained by common toil, and the communal pastures enclosed by hedges which were kept in repair by each and all. If the looms for weaving or the dyes for coloring fabrics were improved, everyone profited. So even in those days, a peasant family could not live alone, but was dependent in a thousand ways on the village or the commune, Kropotkin goes on to write, but nowadays in the present state of industry, when everything is interdependent, when each branch of production is knit up with all the rest, the attempt to claim an individualist origin for the products of industry is absolutely untenable. The astonishing perfection attained by the textile or mining industries in civilized countries is due to the simultaneous development of a thousand other industries, great and small, to the extension of the railroad system, to inter-oceanic navigation, to the manual skill of thousands of workers, to a certain standard of culture reached by the working classes as a whole, to the labors, in short, of people in every corner of the globe. Now, this is insight that is valuable to us today, whatever you think of communist anarchism. In fact, another way to restate what Kropotkin says here is in the words of Barack Obama, you didn't build that. The fact is that, the, that those comments by Barack Obama, which outraged conservatives and which were inspired in large part by uh, things that Elizabeth Warren had said and written, uh, really exist in an intellectual through line, though they would never uh, acknowledge it and probably don't even know it. These ideas go back to the radical thinkers of the 19th century, who were the first among us to understand uh, during the and after the Industrial Revolution that no, to use the words of the poet, no man is an island, that no one stands alone, that we live in a deeply interconnected and interdependent world. Why does that matter now? Well, for a million different reasons, including uh, for, for explaining and understanding why the ideology of the right makes absolutely no sense at all, uh, that why a billionaire did not achieve their billions on their own merits. Now, uh, to those who say every billionaire is a policy failure, that may, in fact, be true because we have allowed one person to gain a, an extraordinary level of the resources uh, we have all built in common. It also is extremely important for us to understand when we consider the needed policies of something like the Green New Deal. The fact that we are all interconnected means that we cannot go about the urgent task of saving our planet from destruction without understanding that capping the excesses of fossil fuel means understanding this interdependence. We are now at a stage well beyond what Kropotkin knew or experienced or could have 
even understood we are now at a stage of interdependence. That means that, for example, in order to cap the uh, misuse, overuse of fossil fuels and perhaps eliminate them altogether, we do in fact have to do things like create a job guarantee because otherwise too many people will be victimized by inequality. Whereas if we create a job guarantee, we can put people to work creating a new web of interdependence that does not rely on fossil fuels that strengthens and reinforces the planet and the delicate web of the environment. It is in fact a kind of human ecology to go along with the physical ecology that leads us to thinking about this kind of interdependence. And when we recognize the needs of the human ecology, we will also be able to save the planetary ecology.